Yeah, my knitwear doesn't need coattails. Oh, hi, I'm Jo. Welcome to Sewing Nerd Studios. This week we're doing a quick thrift flip, and I mean that. I mean we're doing a quick one. So I went thrifting with my dear friend Allison the other day. Hi, Allison. I miss you and love you. And I found the perfect color sweater for me. But it's got this weird, not even like a normal high-low hem situation. It's like straight across the front. And it's got this weird scoop that's also split up the middle along the back and I hate it with a fiery passion. We're going to cut that all off and just turn this into a straight hem and I thought it would be helpful to share the process because I've done this specific type of alteration on this specific type of hem that other people have hated and have been like, can you just make it straight across? Because this scoopy situation round back is very bothersome. Obviously you don't need to use a serger if you don't have one. So don't let that be a barrier for you to like tackle this type of project. You'll be fine. Knitwear doesn't fray. I'm a professional now, God damn it. And I should finish my edges properly because I have the machinery to do so. <laughs> I have no excuses. You have plenty. While I have this on, I'm making sure that if I cut off the front hem as well as the back, then I can hem everything up evenly and it'll still be a good length on me. I'm laying it nice and flat on my cutting mat. I am using a rotary cutter. You can use scissors. This is just gonna be a quicker and smoother cut. There is a self-healing mat underneath here and I am using a long straight edge ruler just to help be a guide because listen, I don't actually have very steady hands. I'm very shaky, bad at getting straight lines without assistance, but that's what these tools are for. And hey, take your time flattening it all out so that there aren't wrinkles and that you do actually think everything's even and you don't have like some rogue fold somewhere along the way. Then I'm going to do a single fold hem. So I'm going to serge this bottom edge here and then I'm going to take it over to my regular sewing machine. I do have an industrial but that only does straight stitches. There's an argument to be made that like zigzag stitches that are visible look a little more homemade but you know what? I did make it at home. I like to do mine from the inside when I have an edge like this just so I can make sure none of the serging thread is exposed. I want to fold it up just a little bit extra like a like an eighth or a quarter of an inch past where the serging ends. And I'm just taking my time. I'm doing a nice long stitch and the stitch width is almost as wide as it can go. I really like when the length and the width of my zigzag stitches match. Just more pleasing to my eyeballs, but do whatever you want to for this. Once I get to the end of the round of stitching, I just do a little back and forth just to reinforce the end and make sure it doesn't unravel. Back tacking, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm done with this. If you don't have a serger and don't have the finished edge like I had, you can fold it up one more time. So I would go about this the same way if I was doing a double fold. Get to the same point after the first row of zigzag stitching and then fold it up one more time and do it all over again. And then you'll have an extra nice finished edge. For me, it depends on like the weight of the fabric, how much length I have to work with, just personal preference as far as doing a single fold or a double fold, choose your own adventure, you know? And with that, I'm off to do some event prep for a market tomorrow. It's in Concord, New Hampshire, and I will see you with the studio vlog next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Oh, that's where that sock went. <laughs> Oh, and there's some underwear stuck in here too. <laughs>